Coach, thank you. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League brings us to Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Mass. A moment ago, the pride of Massachusetts, the Patriots, introduced to this, as always, sold-out crowd as they get set to go head-to-head -head with Ben Roethlisberger and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now the leading rusher for the Pats last year is a rookie, Sony Michelle. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. Well, there's no shortage of great young runners in the NFL, but don't forget about that guy, Sony Michelle. First round pick in 2018. Almost hit 1,000 yards as a rookie. 931 to be exact, to go along with six scores for the former Georgia Bulldog. It's a pickup of five. Brings up second down. And finding Edelman underneath, that's a recipe for success. Typical route for a good slot receiver, and Edelman's one of the best in the game. Knows how to go inside what one of my college coaches used to call the briar patch. Got to go in there where it's tough and make those tough catches. And not only can he do it, he can often run away from people after the catch. Now well, Brady gets away with one. Lucky could have been intercepted, but it falls to the ground. He was looking for the tight end Lance Kendricks there, and it's third and five. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground. Now Brady. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping him from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. Football going over to the Pittsburgh Steelers here. And you think about 2019 coming up. The Killer Bees, it's now just down to the Killer Bees, singular, because you got Le'Veon Bell, he's in New York, Antonio Brown in Oakland, and Ben Roethlisberger, he's the one that's left, Charles. I keep hearing from my scouts around the league that Ben Roethlisberger's having a heck of a camp. It's a lot quieter in Pittsburgh, as you might imagine, right? A lot of the hubbub has died down, but he's playing well. And we saw last year James Conner filled in quite capable, went to the Pro Bowl in Le'Veon Bell's stead. And Juju Smith-Schuster, he was the number two receiver for Pittsburgh last year. Now he has to become the number one with Antonio Brown in Oakland. We'll see how he handles that, but the talent is there. And I love Jalen Samuels, a hybrid-type player out of the backfield in the slot. Dante Moncrief and James Washington have to make the biggest jumps out on the perimeter in order for Pittsburgh to still out. And he goes down. It's a Patriot Sam. Dante Hightower coming in for the sack from his linebacker spot. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen here we soon. Go, here we go. 30. Black, black, black. Hey. Hey, black, black, black. On third down, Roethlisberger looking deep downfield and unable to connect, incomplete. Well, give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice, getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And he didn't quite have the back spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. The Patriots ready to go on their next drive, and it'll be another interesting season for the Super Bowl champs. You look at the pass catching for this offense, Charles. It's a unit somewhat in flux, but there are signs of optimism coming out of Patriots camp. Yeah, just think about it. You mentioned in flux, right? Okay, that means no Gronk. Josh Gordon not available, although they should never have expected that to really be a possibility this year. But they did spend a number one pick on wide receiver Nikhil Harry out of Arizona State. They love his range and his catch radius. But how about this guy who's been turning some heads in camp? A rookie out of NC State, undrafted even though he was high on a lot of people's lists, 
Jacoby Myers, another big body, strong receiver who's been making plays for Tom Brady. Yeah, he announced his presence in a big way preseason game number one with two touchdown catches. On second down, Michelle. And he'll get only a couple up to the 22. Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stopped that one for a short game. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. Man, I got you. Man, I got you. No, no, no. Off, off, off. Hey, 66. On play action, it's Brady. Going up top. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. I think the punter might start to get into a pretty good rhythm here if he keeps getting opportunities. But that's the last thing his team wants to have happen, right? The last thing you want to see is your punter feeling pretty good because he's out there all the time. Yeah, first quarter only, but they're 0 for 2 on third down conversions to start this thing. Call it 46 yards on the punt, just a single yard on the return as he was covered quickly. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Now Roethlisberger. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Washington. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. It's a first down on a gain of 10. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. Roethlisberger throwing complete to McDonald. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. The catch and run, good for 18 and a first down. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Now Roethlisberger over the middle. And it's incomplete. He was looking for Dante Moncrief that time. And that'll bring up second down. By the way, I got to apologize because I just realized for about the last four or five plays, I'm eking over into your territory up here in the booth. My bad. I'm going to get back over to my spot. Yeah, we're not talking about our on air commentary. I mean, what is all this extra paper? I mean, this is unusual I know. for you. My bad. Normally, you run a really tight ship. What's going on here? Just like that incomplete pass, I'm going to try to tighten things up here for this next play. And he's out of bounds. Almost gets to the 10. A first down there on a pickup of 25. Yeah, you know, when I see passes like that, I'm reminded of something you and I talked about yesterday. Big Ben was a wide receiver the first three years of high school, sitting behind the coach's son, and then he finally got that opportunity. I think he's made the most of it. It's always the coach's son, isn't it? But you know where it helps him? When he looks downfield, he knows what the receivers are going to do. He actually has wide receiver's eyes when he's throwing the ball. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. <laughs> Throwing on second and eight, Roethlisberger. This will be caught at about the six. 
That catch good for five. It's third down. Juju, there's definitely a positive spirit about that man. You know, he was, I know you know this story, but he was asked in training camp by a fan to sign his head next to a tattooed Steelers logo. And not a piece of paper on his head. No. Sign his head. Sign his head. And then later, Juju told reporters he'd give game tickets to that fan if he got it tattooed. Well, he did. <laughs> and Juju came through with not only game tickets, but season tickets for the fan. Well, there is a positive spirit about him, as you said. He does give good juju out there and the fans feel it in fact at another practice session he took part in a gender reveal because the fans asked him hey can you come over and help us out with this he said sure and yes ladies and gentlemen it's a boy and boswell's kick is good and the steelers will jump out to a three zip lead Boswell signed to a four-year deal prior to last season, but he struggled a little bit. Yeah, do you think that they saw 13 of 20 when they signed him to a four-year deal? Not at all. Needs a big bounce back in 2019 if he wants to see the end of that contract. Yeah, for the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. They've had it twice. They've punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all, and let's face it, every facility we visit, Everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice, so they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. They may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. On first and 10, here's Brady. And he's got Edelman for the first time. That's complete. Now he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. He got 29 yards that time. The former seventh-round pick, Julian Edelman, just continues to have such a productive career. And has made himself into a receiver. Remember, he was a college quarterback, and not just a productive one, a very good one. At Kent State, right? Yes, yeah, a great leader, a guy who could make plays with his feet and his arm. Got to the NFL and had to convert him to being a receiver and was drafted that way. And that conversion, <laughs> oh boy, it's been good. This game not quite as good as the last, but still over 40 yards between the two. The Patriots into the red zone for the first time. They have a first and 10 at the 18. Shotgun now for Brady. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Yeah, that one sailed on him. You've got to make sure you give your receiver a chance to come down inbounds because they are very gifted. They'll make the circus catches, but they make them out of bounds. That does you no good. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. Throwing again. Brady. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Josh Gordon, the intended receiver. But now it'll be third down. So back-to-back -back incompletions. Third down here in ten, but you're still in field goal range. And that's the thing to keep in mind. They're in field goal range. So now you don't take any unnecessary risks. But you try and find a way to get back to what you were doing earlier in the drive in order to finish this one off. Hey, Alabama, Alabama. Now Brady. He completes it right side to White. And he's going to come up well short as they rally up to stop him at about the 16. Call it a gain of three. And that'll bring up fourth down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. 
they become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. And the 13-year man puts it through, and that will tie us at 3-3. Three -three. So three drives now for this offense, and that field goal gives them their first three points. So if you're an offensive coordinator and you're averaging a point a drive, you're in the wrong lot of work, aren't you? <laughs> you got to find a way to yeah. unlock the key to these defenses and put some big points on the board. Field goals all we've had so far. 3-3 now as the kick is away. This will be fielded at the 8. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point The kicker. Exactly. He put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. Toe bash. I don't know about Toe that. Bash. <laughs> Super tall. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. First play of the drive, a success, 19 yards. When he runs, he seems to do a nice job of knowing when to be patient and find the hole, and then when the hole is there, he goes quickly. You're exactly right. He knows how to just take off, but you know what else? Brings a little thump with him, doesn't he? He does. He packs the boom at the end of the run and finishes it going forward. That's what you want to see out of your backs. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Brian Switzer, the intended target. And it's second down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. On second down, Connor looking for space. And he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. Defensively, though, they had a chance there to hit him for a loss. Couldn't get it done. Looked like someone was able to knife into the backfield, but he wasn't able to get him down. But his compatriots, they were able to grab him at the line of scrimmage and not let him get any further downfield. From the gun on third down, it's Roethlisberger. Open man, Smith-Schuster, it's complete. Yeah, he will go out right near the 35-yard line. Pittsburgh getting 16 yards there and also a first down. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. So a first and five now after the five-yard penalty from the neutral zone infraction. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. Looking sideline, incomplete. Got out of the pocket. Didn't look like he had anybody open, Charles, so just gets rid of it. And a good play by him. If no one's open and you don't have a running lane that you want to take, Make the right choice, get rid of it, live to fight another down. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Roethlisberger will hand to Connor. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. On first down, it's Roethlisberger. His throw caught right around the six. 
And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. The passing game in rhythm right now for Pittsburgh. There's another first down. Roethlisberger and that going to be incomplete too tough to hold on to that one it's second down it is tough to complete pass against zone defenses the windows that you see open they shrink pretty rapidly how about being able to hit a moving target against his zone before the next guy can get there and make a play on the ball not easy for any quarterback no matter the situation and there the defense won the battle black, black, black. Second and goal, Roethlisberger. In trouble, and he'll go down back at the 12. Lawrence Guy busting through to get him for a loss of six. Second goal, last thing you need to do is get pushed backwards to take a sack, but he couldn't find anywhere to go with the football, had to eat it, and ended up on the ground. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. There's Roethlisberger. Screen pass to Connor. And he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. An 11 yard touchdown. And the Steelers have taken the lead. There are several elements to a well executed screen pass. This one resulted in a touchdown. It had all of those elements. Hey, you're so right because you really need the rush to almost get to the quarterback, almost get to the passer. Then you've got to get the ball thrown perfectly, whether it's to the running back, the wide receiver, whoever the screen guy is. And, of course, the blocking has to form in front to get him downfield for the touchdown. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now the Patriots offense, they work their way back out onto the field. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that were that they weren't happy with that field goal. I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Give them 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give them a first down. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. And looked like some movement there. Let's get the call. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. The false start backs him up five, first and 15. Now Brady. Philip Dorsett hauls it in. They'll get 13 yards for the second play in a row. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. On second down, they'll run with White. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. 
pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. They'll try to pick this up on the ground with White. on defense there. They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you should have a few men in the box there. Two first downs have them up near midfield now on first and ten. Working from the gun, it's Brady. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. James White, the man he was looking for out of the backfield. And that'll bring up second down. We've already seen him catch a few passes out of the backfield in the first half, unable to connect on that one. Certainly seems like getting him the ball out of the passing game, though, is part of their game plan. It certainly is because he catches it well, creates a mismatch. You're going to cover him with a linebacker, a corner, a safety. They feel like he can win every battle. On second down now, Michelle, and he'll get this one across midfield and down into Steeler territory. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. And the Steelers now in the nickel here on third down. Here I come again. Here I come again. Throwing now is Brady. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, we're not playing three yards in a cloud of dust football anymore. I kind of get why those old school coaches sometimes didn't want to throw the football. Because if it's popped up in the air, it almost turns into slow motion. And both sides trying to get to the football, and you're holding your breath wondering whether it's going to go good or bad for your team. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. So well done there. These punters, they get more specialized and better each and every year, don't they? They sure do. And now, it's really not the American punters. It's the Australian punters with their kicking academies and that flat drop and just kind of kicking the nose of the football. They're able to almost stop it where they want to like a good golfer can check one up. They begin on the ground here with Connor. And he will take this up to about the eight-yard line. The tackle was made by Michael Bennett. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. On second down, it's Connor. And he'll find some room to get this up to about the 14. The tackle made by Landon Roberts. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. But also like what the runner's giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. And he's going to get the first down here as he's taken down at the 22. The drive stays alive, a third down gain of eight. And we tend to give those running backs that are slashers a lot of credit, but how about guys who are maulers? Because that's what you want in short yardage situations, and we just saw that occur right there, didn't we? Vertical, downhill running. Play fake to Connor. Now Roethlisberger. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A good pick up there, 26 yards. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? And it sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. On first and ten is Connor. And very little running room there. He did get a couple up to the 49. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. From just shy of midfield, Roethlisberger. And McDonald here over the middle. 
And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots' 35. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. Here we go, here we go. Black 20. 54 miles. Watch the run, watch the run. Black and black. Now Roethlisberger on first down. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. It'll be a gain of four, and it'll make it second down. And a nice gain and a broken tackle along the way, and really we shouldn't be surprised, should we? That's what runners do, especially the best ones. They break tackles and gain extra yardage. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Throwing again, it's Roethlisberger. This will be caught just inside the 10. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. From 17 yards out. And the Steelers, they broaden their lead. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails. Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown. Extra point put through by Boswell. And the lead is now 17-3. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. This one taken from the seven. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. To throw is Brady. And he's going to have the hook up to Izzo. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around and make a play on the football. Brady now on first down. That's complete to his tight end. This is Lance Kendricks. The Patriot passing game is rolling. They've got another first down. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. From the gun, it's Brady. Letting one go deep for the end zone. And that'll wind up incomplete. Trying to give his man room to run under it, but it's second down. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all, and I understand why. They've looked lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. To throw again, Brady. And now a fumble. Brady loses the football. 
On plays like this, when the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is a quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. They fake the handoff. Now Brady. He wants it all for the end zone. And that'll be incomplete. Now they took their shot all right, but it comes up empty. And it's fourth down. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. Now it's scooped. And nothing but daylight ahead. The 20, 10, and he's in for six and a Steeler touchdown. In for the score. And the Steelers, they broaden their lead. We talk about it a lot. One of the dangers of the long field goal, you got to kind of hit it low and drive it. That makes it susceptible to a block here. Not only do they block it, they return it. And how about how well they did on the return where they didn't create a penalty? Oftentimes in that type of a scrambling situation, someone will clip, someone will block below the waist, right? You name it. In this case, though, that didn't happen. They formed it up, and he took it all the way back for a touchdown. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. This will be fielded at the eight. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Now comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. They trail here by 24 points. Got to get going soon, you'd have to think, as they come up first and 10. So first and 10 now from the 30. This drive starts out on the ground with Michelle. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here, and what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while, get at least two first downs, give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. The last run got six, now second and four. Brady gives this to White. And unable to get downhill there as he'll take this up to about the 37. The tackle there by Mark Barron. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action and hit them over the top. From the gun on third down, Brady. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. Brady to his old reliable Edelman, and the Patriots have a first down. Now, how many times have we seen that third down and Tom Brady turning to old reliable Julian Edelman? Of course, no Rob Gronkowski now. Edelman the main holdover, the 33-year-old who was a Super Bowl MVP last season. Play action, now it's Brady. Wide open receiver complete. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. 17 yards there for the Patriots as they've got themselves a first down. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. Hey, 
Here now is second and 10, again from the 41. They defer to White out of the shotgun. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Cameron Hayward in on the tackle. Those are the plays this defense needs with the deficit they're facing. It certainly is, and they've got to continue to swarm the football and hope that someone, while they're holding up the ball carrier, can get in there and rake it and lock it free. They need to get some takeaways as well. Throwing his Brady on third down. Got a man. It's his tight end, Lance Kendricks. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 18. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push-off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. Brady now to throw. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down, the offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. They'll turn to Michelle as they go back to the ground. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. It'll be a pickup of five, and that leaves him with five more. Third and five now. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. From the gun on third down, Brady. This will be caught just inside the 10. And he picks up the first as he's able to take it down to the seven-yard line. It's a gain of six as they're able to convert, and now it's first and goal. So another third down conversion, and now they've got a first and goal. Trying to pound it in here with Michelle. A nice pickup of six there to get him closer to the end zone, and it'll be second and goal. And, Brad, they went to a nickel defense, and that's a surprise this close to the goal line because ordinarily you use the back end of the end zone, the sidelines as extra defenders, and you want bigger people on the field to try and help against the run. Michelle on an island by himself in the backfield, second and goal. Now Brady, and he's in. Touchdown, Patriots. Lance Kendricks taking it in. And the Patriots make some inroads here on that deficit. The big fellow was the recipient there for that touchdown pass, and it seems like more and more the tight end is the guy you have to worry about most in the passing game. Extra point good by Gaskowski, and that cuts the lead to Goskowski now after the touchdown he'll send this one away that'll be taken in the end zone and no run back here this will be a touchback and it comes out to the 25 yard line Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field and they had to wait a long time to get the football back probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offense that's humming agreed what you were looking for is the defense get the ball back pretty quickly right hoping for a three and out so that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. They try and run on first down, but to no avail. Tackle for a two-yard loss in the backfield. It'll wind up being a loss of two, and that'll make it second and 12. The 
Al Roethlisberger able to hit his tight end, Grimble. A gain of 13. It's a first down. And with that completion, he's now north of 200 yards here in the first half. Boy, a tough start for the secondary defensively. It is, and it's got to put a dent in their confidence. And, you know, you always want to keep that up and feel like you can always bounce back after plays. But with the kind of numbers he's putting up here, it's starting to wear on them a little bit, I think. So they're looking at each other and trying to figure out what defense will work and how can they play better without getting deep, deep for big passes. Ah, uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. On second and 12, Roethlisberger. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Brandon looked like he had his hands on it for a moment, but let's face it, that was going to be a tough catch all the way because of the presence of the defense right there as he was trying to haul it in. Yeah, nice job to force the incompletion. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Roethlisberger will throw. And he's got Moncrief. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots' 44-yard line. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. So into Pat's territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Now Ben going to give this one to Connor. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. We both know it's difficult, but they've made it look effortless out there. Through the air, on the ground, they've moved the ball with relative ease. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. On the left side, it's McDonald. No gain there on the completion, second and 10. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and 10. Now Roethlisberger. Throw left side complete. That's Connor. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. The last play on the completion got them half of what they needed. Now here's a tough third and five. Here's Roethlisberger to throw. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. Only two on the screen pass there, and it'll be fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. Do you like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion, and what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. Boswell's kick is good. And that'll push the lead up to 17. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. This will be fielded at the 8. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. 
Now the Patriot offense set to take over again. I guess they have to feel a little gratified to at least get on the board last time, but still work to do. No doubt about it. I wonder now if they're going to try to increase the urgency a little bit, maybe pump up the pace, maybe go two minutes. Who knows? Let's see what they decide to do. Brady and the Patriots now first and 10 at their own 26. They begin with Michelle on the ground. Now the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball. He was the finisher. A really nice run. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. They will run with White out of the shotgun. And now running right through him. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Four yards the pick up, first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Shotgun now for Brady. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. And partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. They go with White on the counter. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. It's a first down on a gain of 10. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 46. Cover, cover. Brady going to throw. Going right side here, and that's complete. And he'll cross over out of bounds right at the 25. And a nice gain of 21 yards. I've got to make sure that I don't take Tom Brady's greatness for granted, that we make it routine. How about that throw right there? Yeah. Another, another great completion. And you know one area where he honed his throwing? He was a catcher in high school. He was actually drafted by the Expos in 1995 in the 18th round. Wow, that would have been something to see him behind the dish. I think he gunned down a few guys. Gunned down a few guys trying to steal second. That would have been fun to watch. To throw on second and six, Brady. That's complete to his running back, Burkhead. So he got free of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. A gain of four on the play, and that'll bring up a third down. I think the best offenses love to get the ball to their running backs in open space because they have the ability to make people miss, and they also have the ability to run over people. And if you do that throughout the game, after a while, they might just run through some of those tackles and go a long way. Well, we saw him shed a nice tackle on that play. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. Just to pick up a three, but that is indeed enough. Brady so good on third and short. He's so precise. He's so accurate. Understands exactly what he needs for a first down. You almost think he can go ahead and move the chains before he even takes a snap, don't you? Brady's got his guys first and ten. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. That throw good for four. It's second down. Now the Patriots going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Now Brady again, and this is caught. It's Edelman. 
Now the Patriots will use the Let's second go, of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. This is first and goal and a golden chance to get a score back here before halftime. They'll try and run it in with White. And he's over the line and into the end zone for a Patriots score. Taking it in from two yards out. And the Patriots get a score closer. Well, that touchdown certainly helps. But they've got to go ahead and convert, get to the half, and figure out how to keep chopping down this lead in the second, don't they? Yeah, they still need to regroup, and they still need to end the second quarter strong. A little bit of time left. Goskowski with the extra point, and the lead is trimmed down to 10. Goskowski now after the touchdown he'll send this one away that'll be taken in the end zone and no run back here this will be a touchback and it comes out to the 25 yard line and the Steelers set to take the field you've got under a minute to go here until halftime you got the good size lead no need to do anything crazy no there really is no need to do anything crazy the smart play go ahead and take your lead into the locker room and then try and add to it in the second half but there's a part of me that looks at this and says first half going my way I have a little bit of a cushion let's go ahead and try and extend things if you've got some good plays drawn up you might want to think about them right here. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And the points, they have come fast and furious in this quarter. You really don't want to be on the defensive side of the ball right now, do you? Because you're either thinking, my replacement may get an opportunity. <laughs> Your head better be on a swivel. Totally. Or maybe I just need to get out of the game for a while because I just can't slow these guys down. They've got to figure out a way to just... The Pats are going to get there. Down he goes. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. They don't want to repeat a first down. They'll keep it on the ground. So we reach halftime here in a 10-point game as we'll get you down to Coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Third quarter starts with a run from Connor. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Calling no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. They stay on the ground. Here's Connor again. And he'll take it ahead to the 28-yard line. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. On third down, Roethlisberger. And he finds McDonald. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 
A really nice gain of 25 yards. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. They'll run on first down. Connor. A gain of 10 as they look to add on to this 10-point lead. Right, I remember a coaching friend of mine used to tell his running backs before games, make sure you run and jog with your offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking when those big behemoths start to create space for you up front. He did a pretty good job of just following those guys through there for a nice explosive run. They'll stay on the ground with Connor again. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Third quarter, and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. They'll run here with Connor. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. His throw caught right around the six. And he'll be brought down with the first down and a late flag here, too. And he may get a few more tacked on for good measure. They come out here in the eye. So the ball's moved to about the one after the penalty. First and goal. Connor on the toss play. And he's in. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. James Connor. His second touchdown of the night. And the Steelers, they broaden their lead. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical. That's one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now, starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. This one taken from the seven. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. So here are the Patriots now. They get ready for their first possession of half number two. And their halftime hole now even deeper. And they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down at the half. Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger, but no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing and try and get back to where you were to start the half. Here's a throw, complete right side to start things out. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, 
get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Brady now going to leave it with Michelle on the draw. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage. No yardage would be found. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Working from the gun, it's Brady. And tight coverage there. It's knocked away incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you've got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. The Patriots send out their punter as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. And this is a way. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at the 20. Now counter, and he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. This offense has had a lot to like in this game. I don't know that that last play, though, is going to make the highlight reel. It's not going to make the highlight reel, but it will be the focus of the film session that the team has to sit through. I've sat through those before. Never any fun. You're always excited about your good plays. And, it and now look at him go. He's at the 30, past the 20, and into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. James Washington, 83 yards. And the Steelers, they broaden their lead. And Charles, I had an offensive coordinator tell me one time that they design every play to score. I don't know how true that is. He had to run a long way after that catch. Heck of a play. I think that when he was telling you that, he was designing run after catch in every play. <laughs> I mean, that, that's the only way to put it in there. And that's what we got on that one. Nice catch, an even better run for big yardage. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. This one taken from the seven. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. The Patriot offense now set to come back out onto the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. A pretty nice work defensively there on the first down run as they hold him to a gain of a couple. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. The throw on second down by Brady is incomplete. Edelman was the intended target, and it's third down. That would have been a great catch, but it was real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. 
Would have been a great play if he had been able to haul that one in. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Now Brady. Now a clash of bodies here, and it's intercepted. He's picked off at his own 47, and they'll set up shop right near midfield at the 49-yard line. Edelman, the intended receiver that time. After the interception, here's Roethlisberger. Over the middle, hauled in by Smith-Schuster. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Pittsburgh getting 16 yards there and also a first down. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. A run there on first down and a pretty good one of five yards. So make it second and five. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down. A very solid gain on that play. It's our time. It's our time. Lewis, they say. Lewis, they say. 51. Mike, 51. Again, it's Connor. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blows. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. They'll try and run for it with counter. And he will have the first down across the 20 to the 19-yard line. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. Nice job there finding room to maneuver, and he worked his way into another first down. And look, they had great field position to start, but boy, they've done a nice job taking advantage of it. Now they're just hoping to cap it off. From the red zone now, here's Roethlisberger on first down. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Connor. This carry with the extra effort is going to get him stopped up just shy of the 10. Call it a pickup of seven, and it'll make it a second down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Throw left side, complete to Smith-Schuster. And they'll lose yardage here. They go backwards to the 13-yard line. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs, hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. So that'll back him up five. After the false start, sets up a third and nine. Here's Roethlisberger. And that is incomplete. I know tight ends love this route because a lot of times they'll fake a block first and get a little bit of space and then come across the middle because in their mind, they're thinking catch the ball and then drop the hammer on the little guys in the secondary. Unable to drop the hammer, he just dropped the pass. And Boswell's kick is good. And that'll push the lead from 24 up to 27. So three field goals that he's hit. Now this last one helps him stretch out the lead. He's been solid, hasn't he? And he lives up to the adage that every offensive coach has ever said to us. We want to end every possession with a kick, right? For them, it's either extra point, field goal, or at worst, a punt. In this case, it's been threes.
After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. This one taken just inside the 10. Then he'll take this across the 25. A couple of extra yards up to the 27-yard line. The Patriots offense now, they work their way back onto the field. They are right now just ice cold. I mean, they have struggled big time in this game, and they're getting blown out. How do they adjust? So tough because we always talk about it being a team game, and you need all 11 working well together. But every now and then, partner, you need that one guy who can make a play against all odds that maybe can ignite things. And I got his man complete. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. On the toss, here's Michelle. And he'll get four here down to the 35-yard line. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest gain, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. I got it. Now Brady. That's complete to his tight end. This is Lance Kendricks. And he'll go down at the 28. That one, a first down pickup of eight. That was a round run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw it, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Brady, six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. And he fires one that's intercepted. Joe Hayden, the veteran, with a pick. Well, Charles, while we have a moment, you know what we need to do here is give a nod to the new Hall of Famers who were brought into Canton and inducted on August the 3rd. Champ Bailey, Pat Bolin, Gil Brandt, Tony Gonzalez, Ty Law, Kevin Mawai, Ed Reed, and Johnny Robinson, all part of the class. Fantastic class. When you talk about guys who played at a top level, obviously, they're Hall of Famers. But what I found interesting about it is you've got a great pass catcher, the best pass catching tight end in history in Tony Gonzalez. How would he like to work against this secondary? Champ Bailey and Ty Law at corner, Ed Reed and Johnny Robinson at safety. Good luck trying to get open against those four. What a matchup that would have been. But it was a terrific night for those gentlemen. Congratulations. And of course, Ed Reed's bust will go down in history because they got the hair exactly right and Ed had a ball up there in his Hall of Fame speech. And remember, next year, they're going to celebrate the centennial year of the NFL with a special class of 20. So get ready for those speeches. I wonder if they'll do it like Johnny Robinson this year, who actually submitted a video instead of going up to the podium. And his speech was about five minutes long, which is probably about the right length. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. And I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. And now Edelman. A very good return there. Give him an even 20 yards. And the Patriots will have great starting position as they take over first and 10. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And he's got it. Got his man on the end round. Complete. It'll be a Patriot first down on a pickup of 16. I don't know whether I want to be a fly on the wall or not when they hear the explanation of how he... One of the bigger targets on the field. The tight end could be that wide open and uncovered downfield. Who blew that assignment? Somebody did. No doubt about it. There's no way you're not going to account for him. Going for it all. And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. I remember a coach telling me a long time ago the difference between playing corner and safety in the NFL 
corner is like the autobahn. Everybody just flying by, and these corners have been really busy in this game, although they got it done on the last play. On the last play, yes, but there have been some good numbers put up against him offensively. Brady will try again on second down. Throw over the middle, secured by Gordon. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 16. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Now a first down carry. It's Michelle. And he'll take this one down near the 15. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. That didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just started in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Running out of the gun with White. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. It's a first down on a gain of ten. So a decent deficit at this stage in the second half. Four down territory? No doubt about it. There's not a chance that he hasn't looked ahead and said, okay, if we gain yardage on this play, this is what we'll do going forward. If we lose yardage, this is the play call that I'll have ready. Brady now to throw, and that is incomplete here. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet man because of the coverage. It's way too tight, unable to find anyone open. Michelle on an island by himself in the backfield, second and goal. He'll get it up the middle. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. I don't have to stretch for this one. This is for down territory. They've got to get it in with the deficit that they're facing. Absolutely. It's not the fourth quarter, but still, you, I think you, you can't be thinking three here. No, if you do that, you might as well go ahead and fold up on this one, but I don't think they're built like that. Brady now on third and goal. And that's going to be caught for a Patriot touchdown. Josh Gordon there to make the grab. And the Patriots make some inroads here on that deficit. Well, it was third and one. I was expecting run so much for that. They pass it, they score it. That had the feel of the head coach telling the offensive coordinator, you've got four downs here. We're going to go for it on fourth down unless there's a disaster on third. Go ahead and take a shot if you want to. And he gratefully accepted the opportunity and did exactly that. If they didn't get it there, that had the feel that they would come back and try it on fourth down. Goskowski now after the touchdown. He'll send this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And now you've got the clock winding down here in the third quarter. Your three scores to the good. What's your approach on this drive? Too early to fully commit to playing the clock game. Yet, at the same time, you're also not going pell-mell like you would in two-minute offense. This is what NFL offenses call four-minute football. Take the clock out of the game a little bit, wind it down, but at the same time, keep advancing the ball down the field. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. 
Roethlisberger now off the bootleg. Open man completes it to Smith-Schuster. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots' 38-yard line. Still throwing the football here, even with the big lead. Yeah, I know you and I came up in a different era, and we think about sportsmanship and all that. Other people think about fantasy points and getting their numbers. That's all they care about right now. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Roethlisberger will hand to Connor. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. Roethlisberger going to get this one to Connor, and he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yardage. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for lost yardage. Now Roethlisberger to throw. Blitz coming, and down he goes. Jason McCourty, a safety blitz and a sack. Brandon, more often than not, you'd say they've had his number, and we can count them up so far. One, two, three, four sacks given up. But guess what? He's still been able to make some plays, and right now they have a lead. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he's on to punt for Pittsburgh. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. And now out come the Patriots. And that last drive was very, very balanced, pretty methodical. You think they go that route again? I'm always of the school that until they stop me from doing something, I'm going to continue. And I think that that's exactly what they'll look to do. But the beauty is the balance that they've created sets up opportunities for big plays. Looks like a run, turn into a play action, and throw one deep. Brady, he's going to air one out. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. Fair to say the secondary play, whichever side you're on, hasn't really been a glowing exhibition so far, but a nice job there to prevent a long completion. I agree with you, but at some point, someone had to make a play and try and stop this exhibition of almost speed racing that we've been watching, huh? Yeah, it has been quarterback and receiver dominated. On second and 10. Brady, and he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. The last catch did get three, but they're still left needing seven yards on third down. Got a man. It's his tight end, Lance Kendricks. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. Give him 15 yards on that one, and New England has a first down. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. Brady's throw there complete. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Again, it's Brady. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll get it down here to the 43. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. Brady to his tight end, Lacoste, and brought down but able to get it to their 30-yard line. The Patriot passing game is rolling. They've got another first down. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. 
And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. And Brady's throw there, incomplete. But at this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. Sugar, sugar. Throwing again. Brady on the left side, a catch by White. Give him three on the play, and they're going to have a third down. With James White, you know that he can catch the football. He was third in the NFL amongst running backs last year with 87 catches. And as we've seen, sometimes they come in bunches. Super Bowl 51, he had 14 grabs, including the winning score. Last year in the divisional round versus the Chargers, 15 receptions for White. Open man is Gordon, complete. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be. And Michelle will find his way in. Touchdown, New England. Taking it in from four yards out. And the Patriots get a score closer. And there you go. Nothing really too complex. Block, keep to your assignments. Let them run it in. They did it. Fundamental football. Good blocking. Beats good tackling on that play. And result, touchdown. Goskowski the extra point. And that cuts this lead down to 13. Goskowski now after the touchdown he'll send this one away this one fielded at the five and he'll take this across the 25 a couple extra yards up to the 27 yard line Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field well, there are two scores on the plus side still time here in this fourth quarter but Maybe you start thinking about playing keep away. Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. On first and ten, it's Roethlisberger. And complete to Moncrief over the middle. And they work this well upfield across the 45. That one good for 20 on the catch and run. Well, it may seem a little unorthodox to some people. Got the lead, fourth quarter, yet he's still firing away. I think he believes that's the best way to go ahead and win the game. Yeah, a lot of coaches say, let's just run the football, be conservative. He's sticking to his game plan. No, that is his game, and that's what they're going to ride. A little bit of space there for the first down run as that's going to get him about five yards. The safety, Patrick Chung, is the one who makes the stop. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw it through three quarters. No reason to lighten up now. Second and five now. Roethlisberger. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player? No chance at all. Way easier said than done. Now it's Roethlisberger. Screen pass to Connor. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. Call that a loss of seven. 
to bring up fourth. Well, you can see what they wanted to do. They wanted to set up the screen there, but it got blown up. It's hard to run that play if you're not getting a lot of pressure at the quarterback because the space doesn't open up. They were able to read that one and slow it down and stop it before they could get a first down. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. To throw again on second down, Brady. That's complete to his running back, Burkhead. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Let's go, let's Six go. yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Fourth quarter, every drive's so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. Brady now on first down. Caught on the right side by Dorsett. And getting this chest shy in midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. 17 yards there for the Patriots as they've got themselves a first down. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple of scores, and they've really got to get some yards in chunks, and they know the defense doesn't want to give those up, but they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? To throw, it's Brady. And he's got Edelman on the out route. That's complete. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight. Second and two. A good pickup there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. Tom Brady needing a fourth quarter comeback here. He's actually only done it eight times in the last five years, but if you break that down further, the Pats in those years rarely losing in the fourth quarter like they are now. The throw on second down by Brady is incomplete. Oh, man, for him to be that wide open and drop it, sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much and your hands get shaky. And yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Brady to throw again. And he comes back with one complete. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. The Patriot passing game is rolling. They've got another first down. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. Now Brady. And this is caught at the eight. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. Defensively here, you've got the cushion, but back-to-back -back pretty big pass plays there. Bend but don't break, but are they bending too much? I think that they are. To me, it'd be like playing basketball, and you put up a token press. Make sure you get up there and make them eat up some time. Make it a little bit of resistance so they can't just run it right down your throat. Now Brady. And now a fumble. Brady loses the football. But I think the Patriots are going to hang on to the football. They do. They get it back. A call it luck or skill, whatever the case is, they're feeling good about just keeping the football there. Yeah, the biggest thing that they're calling it now, our ball. <laughs> I mean, they don't care if it was luck or skill, but the panic that jumps up in your chest when that ball's on the ground, whether you get it or your teammate gets it, just as long as you retain possession, that's all you're looking for. Off the draw, here's Michelle. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. They do get six, but they've still got some work to do on third and goal. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness. Think about running the ball here 
Not even a thought, is yeah, it? Defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. Now Brady gets away with one. Lucky could have been intercepted, but it falls to the ground. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted, and if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. Man left, man left. Alert, alert. Brady going to go on fourth down. And this is caught. Touchdown, Patriots. Josh Gordon with his second touchdown of the night as his guys are back within a single score. A lot of people might call this backyard football. Sometimes just understanding who you've got out wide and who you're going to throw it to. Give him an opportunity to go up and make a play even when contested. Looks like that one worked out pretty well. The trust factor in effect. Extra point good by Gaskowski. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. Goskowski now after the touchdown he'll send this one away this will be fielded at the six and he'll take this across the 25 a couple extra yards up to the 27 yard line now the Steelers offense gets ready to get back onto the field right now clinging to a one score lead Charles and I think operating within that four minute offense with a little less than four minutes to go applies here right it certainly does and that means the playbook is still wide open but you are a little bit more careful about what you're calling. You want plays they are going to gain yardage, how would you say it, consistently, mm -hmm. right? You don't need the big shots downfield, but make sure the clock continues to run. Pile up the first downs, and the goal, end the game with your quarterback kneeling down at the end, and you still have the lead. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. On second down, Connor looking for space. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 11 yards there, first down. Well, that looked like an example of what you said back in the first half. A running back of his size can really wear down a defense. I think he's starting to do that. I think you're exactly right. And know what else he's doing? He's inspiring the rest of his team because they see this starting to happen as well. So that means they're going to redouble their efforts to help him out. Extra blocking, getting downfield, helping him out. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Right back to Connor here on first. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Watch the slip. Watch the slip. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. And whistles, and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 1.53 left. Third down, it's Connor. 
And he is going to have the first down, and that is going to suck the life right out of this crowd. The Patriots will take their third and final timeout, and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. This is Connor, and I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. That last play, though, not indicative of the night he's had running the football. No, you're exactly right about that because all through this evening, it's been their night, hasn't it? One play here, they get it against them. I wouldn't worry about that very much at all. Just continue to do what they've been doing. On second down now, it's Connor. It'll be a gain of five, and it's going to bring up a third and about seven left. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. Here's play number seven on the drive. This is third and seven. Roethlisberger dropping to a knee, and that ought to do it. Well, taking that knee, maybe just a sigh of relief. They withstood a big fourth-quarter comeback. Able to hold on, though. Certainly looked like they had things going their way, didn't it? In the fourth quarter, they had to just hold on. As you said, furious assault on them. But they were able to get it done, take a knee, and head to the locker room with a win. Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feel like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hard-working men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. From Foxborough, good night, everybody.